So let us now proceed and check out the demo video of the object oriented programming in Java. Now if you notice here, this my demo class is actually the class that we were using since the very beginning of this course. And this method is actually the main method present inside this class. Now if I define here int x, then this integer x will be called as the field variable of this my demo class, right? So here let us remove this. Now down the side, here I will simply create my new class such as class space. Let's give it a name as rectangle. Fine. So this rectangle is actually our class. Now inside this, let us define the property of the rectangle. So the property of the rectangle is such as int length and int breadth. Now since the length and breadth can be the float or double, so here let us change it to float. And now these are actually the field variables or the properties of the class rectangle. And now down the side, let us define few methods such as the rectangle can have the area and can have the perimeter. Fine. So let us define a method that will simply return the area of the rectangle and the perimeter of the rectangle. So here I will simply use public void get area and I will use the local variable of area equal to length into breadth. Fine. Now here let's change it to float and now let us return return the area and here it will show this error because we are using void as the return type. So here let us change a return type as float because we are returning something and this area variable is actually of the type of float. So here I have to use float and now this rectangle class can also have the perimeter. So here I will use public float again space get perimeter and now I will simply use float p equal to let us use the formula 2 into length plus breadth and simply return. So these are the two properties or the activities that can happen inside the rectangle class. Now apart from this in the previous two videos I talked about the concept of getter and setter that is to initialize the value of length and breadth we should do it with the help of the getter and setter methods. So here down the side what I will do I will simply right click and simply click on generate and simply click on getter and setter methods. And now select both of these click on OK. So here inside the rectangle class now what do we have is we have the getter for length, setter for length, getter for breadth and setter for breadth again. So the IntelliJ IDE has automatically created the getter and setter functions in our case. Now if you are using some other IDE then please type all this code manually. And now at the top inside my demo class inside the main method how can we create the instance of this rectangle class. So for this so for this to create a new object we can simply use new rectangle. Now by default when this statement will be executed it will simply create a new rectangle object inside the heap memory. But this object won't be accessible to us because we are not using any reference variable just before creating this object. So to access this object we need a reference variable. So let us use rectangle space r1 equal to new rectangle. So now this object will now be accessible with the help of this r1 variable. And now to initialize the length and breadth we can use r1 dot breadth equal to let's say 10 and r1 dot length equal to let's say 20. Fine. Now as per the concepts of getter and setter we should use the getter and setter instead of accessing the variables directly. So for this what we can do r1 dot set breadth simply pass 10 as a parameter and here r1 dot set length and simply pass 20 as a parameter. Fine. So this will simply set the length and breadth as 10 and 20 inside the rectangle class or inside the object, right? And now let us try to print the value of length and breadth of rectangle object. So s out, let us print r1 dot breadth 
s out let us print r1 dot length now again instead of accessing the breadth and length directly we can simply use the getter methods that is get length and get breadth right so now if you suppose want another developer not to deal with these variables directly so here what you can do simply use private keyword and here again simply use private keyword now this r1 will not have any access to this breadth and length outside the rectangle class just because we have made the accessor as private and private here again so if you want to print the breadth and length so you have to compulsorily use the getter method such as get breadth and here get length and now let us run our code so here we get 10.0 and 20.0 as the output and now suppose now if i create one more object rectangle space r2 equal to new rectangle so this statement will simply create a new object and a new reference variable so this r2 will now point to this new rectangle object created right now suppose let us change something here instead of creating the new object suppose if i use r2 equal to r1 so what will happen so as per the discussion in the previous two videos we already know that whenever we assign one reference variable to another then this r2 will again point to this object of new rectangle present here so indirectly we can say the r2 and r1 are actually same but just their name is different right because these two points to the same object that we have created here now let us check out if we are correct or not so let us change r2 dot set length let's say 50 and now let us change r2 dot set breadth let's say 100 and now let us print out the value using the r1 reference variable fine let's check it out now in the output you can see we have the breadth and length as 150 now it should be reverse 100 should be here and 50 should be here but never mind it was by mistake so this is the proof that both r1 and r2 are actually pointing to the same object of new rectangle object here right so whatever changes that you will make inside r2 and r1 will be reflected in both the cases here and here as well and now similar to r2 we can simply create as many objects as we want and as many reference variables such as r3 equal to new rectangle similarly r4 and similarly r5 now these three r3 r4 and r5 are actually the new reference variable pointing to their own objects right so this is the object and now at the end suppose you want to print the value of the area the perimeter then what you can do you can simply use r1 dot let's say get area r1 dot get perimeter and you can simply print and get the area and perimeter of the rectangle object fine and you can define as many objects inside this class as you want to now at the end let us summarize this video these two length and breadth are actually the field variables of the class and this floating point area is actually the local variable because its scope is only present inside this method of get area similarly float p is again the local variable and this is the getter for length setter for length and similarly getter and setter for the breadth down the side and here at the top we have r1 r2 and r3 r4 and r5 these are actually known as the reference variable or you can say the instance variable so this was all about the object oriented programming in java in our upcoming videos i will again talk about the classes and objects in a lot more detail so catch you guys in the next video thank you and have a good day